So Fred asked me if, I, if I'd been somewhere and got a tan. I think it might just be a tad of excitement about being up here at his well. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> OK, so, um, so what, it, it really is a privilege to, to be given the opportunity to, you know, to begin the discussion today. And, and uh, I, I really am grateful to be part of this, uh, this thing that we do here at the New Thought Spiritual Center of Eastern Long Island, you know? It's a great place. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes to tell you what I understand about uh, universal spiritual law at this particular place in, in my own personal journey back to the one. And, and then I'm going to try and point out a, a thread of spiritual development in the themes that, that the prayer chaplains have chosen this year. Um, after that, we'll open it up. and. Uh, for anybody that might wish to speak on the topic of law or anything else that might have uh, resonated or lit up your heart this morning, you know? It's, that's what happens to me a lot here. Um, <clears throat> so I want to begin at the beginning, um, at the origin of New Thought as I understand it. I'm going to read a couple of quotes um, that demonstrate uh, the spiritual nature of Ralph Waldo Emerson's uh, body of work. And, and then from one of his greatest influences, which is the Upanishads, um, part of the Vedic writings, um, the civilization in, the, in, the northern, in northern India, in the Indus Valley, uh, about 1500 BC. So the Upanishads and Emerson were major influences on many New Thought luminaries, including Thomas Troward, Ernest Holmes, Eric Butterworth, which are a few of my personal favorites. And, and many consider Emerson to be the father of New Thought. Emerson says, there is one mind common to all individual men. Every man is an inlet to the same and to all the same. He that is once admitted to the right of reason is made a free man of the whole estate. What Plato has thought, he may think. What a saint has felt, he may feel. What at any time has befallen any man, he can understand. Who hath access to this universal mind is a party to all that is or can be done, for this is the only and sovereign agent. It is you. What Plato has thought, you may think. What a saint has felt, you may feel. Because you have access to the universal mind. Emerson says, of the universal mind, each individual is one more incarnation. All its properties consist in him. All the properties of the universal mind consist in you, in me, in us. So if we back up about 3,000 years before Mr. Emerson, and, and we look at a passage from the Chandogya Upanishad, which he was most assuredly familiar. Emerson, when Emerson traveled, you know, he didn't have an iPad, so he had to take a book or two with him, you know. And one of the books that he, that he took with him was the, the Bhagavad Gita, you know, the great epic story from, from you know, Hindu civilization. And, and that speaks a lot to me, you know. I mean, this is a man that traveled around the country, and, and, and when he was on the road, you know, his inspiration, you know, was this ancient text. So, in the Upanishad, this is one of the story in the uh, Upanishad, and it's a, a father speaking to a son after the son's return from studying, you know, in an ashram for some years. And uh, the father says to the son, in this very being of yours, you do not perceive the true, but there in fact it is. In that which is the essence of your own being, all that exists has itself. An invisible and subtle essence is the spirit of the whole universe. That is the true. That is the self. And thou, thou art that. So this is personal for me. Um, <clears throat> the truth of this passage um, has really echoed within for me ever since the first time I read it. 
and, and it really has been a great influence on my spiritual life. Um, so we are God stuff. You know, you and I, each of us and all of us, you know. God is the ocean. I am a drop in the ocean, you know. I am not the ocean, but I have all the qualities of the ocean. I'm repeating Emerson, of the universal mind, each individual is one more incarnation. All of its properties consist in him. So when the truth of this dawns on us, you know, on me, when, when the contemplation of the nature of my being, you know, just creates this kind of electric current and, and all of a sudden I have a realization uh, of this truth. Uh, it just, it, it's amazing to me and, and Holmes states it very plainly. There is a power for good in the universe available to everyone and you can use it. You can use it. This is the universal principle. This is the law of mind, you know. When I change my thinking, I change my life. I am part of the infinite creative mind of the universe and what I think is expressed. What I think is expressed. So we begin at the beginning with the law. And we trace an arc of growth. You know, this is, to me, this really it sort of traces a path through, you know, what, what happens when we begin to come to these realizations and, 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 and we study and, and we participate in a fellowship like this, which is, we're so blessed to have. And, and we begin to, to actually do some work to put some of these practices in our life, you know, then, then you know, we, we move through a process here, you know, and this isn't a perfect illustration of the process, but, but, it, but it tells us something about, you know, what's going on here, you know. The um, love and law is something that we hear all the time, you know. Law is the way things work, and, and love is the energy behind it, you know. When, when, I, when I tap into that universal mind, I'm tapping into the, to the nature of God, which I believe is, is love, you know? And that's, that's how it begins to work. And then I do a little work, you know? I, I take some time to pray, you know? I, I take some time to, to sit and be quiet, you know? And, and you know, this community, and, and when we put together these, these affirmations and, these, and this mission statement, and, and we form this community. You know, you look on the back of that card that, that Joseph talks about every, every week, and, and these, these things that, that we talk about that we're trying to put into our own lives and espouse, it, it's amazing, you know? This, we positively check, ch affect change in our lives and in our world through love and affirmative prayer. That's part of who we are, you know? Trusting yourself is trusting the wisdom that created you, you know? Um, Loving myself, forgiving myself, you know, taking care of myself allows me to love others, forgive others, be of service to others, you know. We acknowledge our unity with God and each other and demonstrate this truth in our life. It's a pretty clear demonstration going on here this morning, I would say, you know. I, it amazes me, you know. <laughs> By knowing and practicing universal spiritual laws, we transform our consciousness and awaken to our oneness with God. We do a little work, we do a little study, we do a little service, you know, and then we have an awakening. You know, my conscious contact with a higher power, you know, increases on a daily basis as I let it happen and make a little effort in that process, you know. So, <clears throat> freedom, the, you know, you had to have a, a quote from the Buddha in here, so. The, <laughs> The, the, the freedom one is great, I, 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 you know, and the, and the ocean theme comes up again, you know, and here it is, the taste of the ocean, you know. Just as the great oceans have but one taste, the taste of salt, so too there is but one taste fundamental to all true teachings of the way, and this is the taste of freedom, you know. I don't have to live in bondage, you know. I can, I can taste the salt of the ocean of the universe and, and become a free man. Intuition, Emerson talked, I, I, 
I don't want to go on too long. I had a lot of Emerson quotes I had to cut out. So. <laughs> So intuition is a spiritual faculty and does not explain, but simply points the way. You know, it relates to trust. We begin to trust ourselves. You know, we do some work. We, you know, we, we begin to have this experience of the universal, and then we can begin to trust our intuition, you know? Trust what, what we're impelled to do, what, what seems right to us, you know? You can't really make a mistake, you know? You make a choice, you do the best you can, you're on the path, you know? It's a, it's a great feeling to have, you know? Creativity, God expresses through us as us. You know, another simple statement that's part of who we are here. You know, that's us. That's our mission statement, you know? Our awareness of divine presence is evolving and we remain open to refining our beliefs. Again, that's us. That's what we're doing, you know? And we're not drawing a line in the sand. We're remaining open, you know? We're flexible, pliable. You know, um, they talk about the plasticity of the brain. You know, we're all creating new neural networks, new neural pathways in our brains when we sit here and, and we enjoy this with each other, you know, every week. All right. So, in one of my favorites, Meister Eckhart, who was basically silenced by the church, you know, and for, for his philosophy and belief, gratitude. It is, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will suffice. You know, thank you. That's pretty much what I try to say every day when I get out of bed. And peace. So we come through this process, and in the end we can find peace, you know. An inner peace, you know, beyond all understanding, really. And this is Holmes. Divine intelligence guides me into peace, happiness, and success, into joy, love, and perfect life. Uh, it's an amazing thing that happens here. So I'm going to finish with an uh, affirmation from Holmes. I know that God is within me. I know that the spirit within me is perfect. I enter into its peace, and I am secure in its protection. The unerring judgment of divine intelligence directs my way. The creative soil of thought is the mental medium through which this law operates. The idea is the seed. Faith is the expectancy of fulfillment. The result is the harvest. And in my mind, the harvest is peace and prosperity in its truest expression. And that's what I have, and so it is. Thank you.